Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. With Pat McSherry. All right, what a fish. And Andy Bioka. Wow. Get the colors on this fish. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm James Holst, and today's show is our final episode of season 12. It's been an incredible journey over the last six months. Really haven't had a chance to reflect and soak it all in, but let me tell you, from all the guys here at In-Depth Outdoors, myself, Pat McSherry, Alex Anderson, Ben Larson, it has been an absolute adventure, and we're already looking forward to next season. So to wrap up this season here at In-Depth Outdoors, we're headed to Leech Lake. And why Leech Lake, you might ask? Well, Leech typically fishes very well at the start of the walleye season. Throw in a little wind, and you're usually good to go. Now, unfortunately, on today's episode, that wind doesn't really arrive until the very end of the day. But regardless, we still catch a bunch of great fish. It's Pat McSherry and I today here on In-Depth Outdoors targeting early season walleyes on Leech Lake, Minnesota. So we just launched on Leech Lake out of Walker, Minnesota. Final show of the day, fishing with one of my favorite fishing buddies, Pat. You know what? I think I might just go dead silent, let you host this thing, and <laughs> okay. phone it in. <laughs> well, we're going to go fish some shallow water. We're on Leech Lake, early season, and uh, these fish are going to be shallow, hopefully. And uh, we're going to cast some jigs, maybe do a little bit of rip and wrap stuff, and Jig see if we can get on some fish. Not the conditions we're looking for. Uh, Leech Lake, classic, kind of that Minnesota opener vibe, you know. Uh, you want to see some clouds in the sky, you want to hear the wind whistling through the yeah. trees to get the lake kind of kicking a little bit. We've got the exact opposite of that. Uh, honestly, we should have uh, the girlfriends or the wives out here in the bikinis pulling them out of tube or something. <laughs> but that's not reality today. No. We'll figure it out. It's Leech Lake. Great fishing. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit uh, slower presentation throw a little bit, uh, you know, smaller baits at them, we'll be just fine. Yeah. We're here. I think I want to start out by uh, casting the plastic. Or casting a crankbait. All right, I'll do a plastic. Deal. There's a fish. We are on the board. They said it couldn't happen. <laughs> Gonna need a scoop on that one? Oh, I should be able to grab him here. Nice fish though. There we go. Male? Male. First walleye of the year right there. And I went, I started out with a, with a jig and a plastic. Didn't get bit after about a half an hour, and I put a rainbow on there, and that one whapped it. So it's a good start. Get that fish back and fire back in there and get another one. This fishery has really swung around. I know, you know, 10, 15 years ago, all the talk was about cormorants and the destruction that they were causing, and now here it's one of the uh, fisheries in Minnesota where the population of the walleyes is so good that they're thinking about. Uh, reducing that slot. You know, I don't know what the DNR has in mind, but maybe they'll go 18 to 24 as protected and anything else you can keep. But that's good to know. It's good to hear. Did he whop it pretty good, Pat? Yeah, he did. Yep. You're just basically just dragging that thing along, weren't you? Yeah, just hopping it a little bit, dragging it. Well, I'm the stubborn cuss over here fishing, uh, digging plastic yet. Yeah. We'll let Pat get uh, three or four up on me before I uh, get my head in the game. 
you need that quarter cup, we just want to have a Yeah? Stop working right now! Look outside. Is this spreadsheet weather? No, it's not. This is fishing weather. So stop clicking, get out there, and catch a bass. Stop what you're doing and start fishing Rapala Ripstop. Authentic Series Soft Baits from Beef Fish and Tackle are just what the doctor ordered if you want to scratch your big fish itch. Available in two body styles, the Moxie Auger Tail and the Pulsar Paddle Tail offer a perfected blend of field-tested color patterns and hyperactive designs that come to life in the water. To produce unparalleled fish catching movement and vibration, other soft baits just can't match. Authentex Plastics, your prescription strength cure for slow fishing, only from Beef Fish and Tackle. Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle-free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer is a proud sponsor of In-Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandle value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick-free lifetime powertrain warranty. Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state-of-the-art facility in Aiken or visit us 24-7 at BrandleGM.com. Fishermen who swear by it. There we go. That's it for me. Yeah. I'm a stubborn guy, but after uh certain point I know when to give up <laughs> with these flat conditions like this. The bite's so subtle, they're so lethargic that the jig and plastic is not cutting it right now. Later, we get a little bit lower light, jig and plastic will work. Yeah, he thumped it pretty good Did too. Mm -hmm. That's that orange jig head you put on her. Yep. Yeah, I can't even see it. He really engulfed it. Oh. There we go. There we go. Nice leech lake walleye there. And as you can see, that bait is just gone. There we go. Nice leech lake walleye. That's one of those slot fish, probably 20 inches or so. We'll get them back. Off she goes. Was that a female or was that a male? Um, hard to tell? Hard to tell, yeah. Thinking it could have been a female. If you wink at them and they wink back, then you know. <laughs> and all I'm using is a pretty pretty much a standard presentation. That's a 1 8 ounce hammerhead jig VMC. And then I'm just putting a rainbow or a fathead. We got, we don't have any shiners in the boat. They're pretty hard to come by right now. I'm sure in another week or so, uh, all the bait shops will have them. But for right now, they're a little bit hard to find. So we're just running rainbows and fatheads and uh, fish are biting them. There we go. I'll tell you what, Pat, we might want to just sit and work this little hidey hole, huh? Yeah, they're definitely down in a small area. Mm -hmm. They're nice fish, too. Sure they are. Oh, yeah, nice walleye. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Water's just clear. You can see them down there head shaking. Yeah, that's the point where uh, I lost my fish. <laughs> Big old head shakes. There we go. Another of that same same kind of year class, I suppose. You could keep that one if you wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you could. The slot out here right now is 20 to 26. And uh, you can obviously have one over 20, so you can only keep four fish. But that one you could keep. I'm sure that's a male up here. There's a little bit of rubble and rock here, and it's kind of why these fish are here. They're just getting done spawning, and they're in eating minnows. Get that Some fish Some of back. which are attached to jigs. Yep. All right, we'll get that fish back. All right, and here's my basic uh, setup as far as line goes for doing this jig pitching. And I'm using an eight pound suffix nano braid. 
and I got a uni to uni knot down to a eight pound fluorocarbon leader material. And that's just a super sensitive setup for detecting these bites. Some of these bites are, you know, you're gonna feel them, but some of them are also real light. So you wanna be able to detect those bites and uh, it's working really well. That stuff about, there's about as fine as doll's hair. Yeah. It's amazing <laughs> how strong it can be for how thin it is. Fish. Fish on! That one whopped it again. Good. I might have to go switch over yeah, to a orange a nicer, chartreuse. Nicer one too. Let me know if you need the scoop. It's just kind of a subtle technique of just Bonk. basically we're casting that a 45 degree away from the boat and then just kind of letting that bait swing back there and giving it some subtle lifts and pops and they're eating it. There we go. Nice walleye. Yeah, it is a nice one. Mm -hmm. Definitely a spawned out female, I would yep. imagine. Yep, that's definitely a spawned out female. Super nice fish. Leech Lake has got plenty and plenty of fish like this. Lots of nice walleyes out here. All right. See you later. That one ate a fathead, James. It did, huh? Yep. I don't think they care about the minnow too much. No. Jig color might matter a little bit, but. I think it's totally, it must just be like a scent thing with the plastics. Obviously, if we had a little wind in here, I'm sure they'd be wailing on the plastic. This afternoon, man, I'm telling you, we get sunlight, lower levels, mm -hmm. that plastic will be the way to go. But while I am a team player, Pat, and I do enjoy watching you catch fish, there's, there is a limit to that. <laughs> in pursuit of what lies beneath, Okuma Fishing Tackle is the point of connection between angler and opportunity, giant pike and muskie, drag screaming salmon, and deep bodied lake trout, hard fighting bass, and the elusive walleye, all pursued by anglers that demand the smoothest, longest casting reels, and perfectly balanced fishing rods, engineered to perfection everywhere, every species. Okuma Fishing Tackle is inspired fishing. Center is now a full-service Warrior Boats dealer, offering the complete line of Warrior Boats, all covered by reliable Yamaha outboards. With dealerships located in Ramsey, Minnesota and Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, Skeeter Boat Center carries more Warrior Boat models in stock than any other Warrior Boat dealer. No matter which Warrior model is right for you, you'll receive the same attention to detail and service after the sale that made Skeeter Boat Center the number one Skeeter dealer by volume in the Midwest. For the best selection of fiberglass fishing boats and unmatched service, stop in or visit us online at SkeeterBoatCenter.com. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Fish. There First cast. Go. Nice. That's a walleye. Yes, sir, it is. Pat has been responsible for all the groceries here for a while. I will readily admit I'm probably one of the worst jig and minnow fishermen you'll ever meet. You can sure catch them on a plastic, though. Yeah, I had to switch back. I was embarrassing myself. You would think, jig and minnow, anybody can do that? I can't at all. Decent walleye there, nice little eater. Threw on a, a bait that we're just starting to experiment with here a little bit. It's actually a saltwater bait, or at least it's branded that way. It's a, a Storm GT360 Coastal, made for bonefish, redfish, speckled trout. Wally will eat them too. 
And if you were to ask me what that pattern was, I would call it completely by the wrong name. I guarantee <laughs> <laughs> it's some kind of like ocean bait fish. <laughs> Chartreuse cracker. Chartreuse cracker, that'll work. Well, I do know it's the mangrove minnow. Is that a mangrove or a largo? That's a mangrove minnow. Mangrove. Well, I mean, the fish aren't exactly tuned up crazy right yep. now, so I went with the more subtle. Yep. There's, a, there's two different body styles in those coastal or GT360 coastals. You've got a largo shad, isn't it, Pat? Yep. Deeper body, definitely a shad profile. And then this uh, mangrove minnow is longer, slimmer. And I was thinking imitating a shiner might not be a bad idea. Fish. Fish on! Let me know if you need a scoop. Will do. Feels like a nice one. That was that, uh, you said five pounder on that big uh, rainbow, right? No, that big fat head that looked oh, like a creek chub. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> They're hard to find that big. Oh, it's just another one of those 20 inches or so. I will take them every single time though. This has got to be just one of the most simple presentations there is for walleyes. Throw it out and drag it. Yep. And the bite has just been, I'm not going to lie, it's been a pretty tough bite. I mean, it's Leech Lake, it's really wind driven. You're always going to want to look for windy shorelines, windy points, stuff like that. And we just don't have a breath of wind out here. So it's been just kind of a slow drag. Uh, that's part of the reason why the back of the boat is actually easier to present the bait that way. And that's partly why I've been able to catch a few more. But James is up trying some plastics right now and he's having some success doing it. So hopefully as these light levels start to lower a little bit, we'll get on some walleyes throwing plastics here towards dark. I plan to come back strong. <laughs> James always seems to finish strong, so. All right, get back into the minnow pail. How are those things doing? They're doing all right. Fish. Looks like it could be the right kind. I hope so. What do you see back there, Patrick? Um, I'm gonna guess it's not the right kind. Oh my God. That's a Waldo. Yeah. Need a net or? Yes, please. Well, you know my success rate so far with uh, trying to lift them. Right. <laughs> well, that's a decent fish. Yeah, it is. There we go. Nice fish. Thanks, sir. They're eating that plastic. Oh, well, they're trying to anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, long and lean perch eating machine. A bit of a mix in here. You know what? I might have to dig in my tackle box and figure out what the color is on that thing. Oh, Pat's got one. Double. Maybe? Nope. Oh, he's got a tiny little perch. <laughs> I'll let that guy go. See you later, fish. Goodbye. I always uh, take the color tag off the uh, bag and throw it in the slot because I can never remember. That one's called the Hot Mama. Hot Mama. Hot Mama. Right now it is. I don't even know why I ever try to fish a jigging minnow. <laughs> I've got a mental block. Um, no offense to Chuck Knobloch, at one point in his baseball career, he had a hard time throwing from second base to first. Great player, he just, something went wrong with him and he eventually overcame it. I'm that way with fishing jigging minnow. I cannot do it. Right now I'm three hopping my cast to first base when I got a jigging minnow on there. I think it's because I overwork it. I can't just throw it out there and let the minnow do what the minnow needs to do. I've got to hop and pop and skip yep. and do all that stuff. And then the fish look at that and go, that's not real. <laughs> so here I am fishing a hot mama. Whatever works. Authentic Series Soft Baits from Beef Fish and Tackle are just what the doctor ordered if you want to scratch your big fish itch. Available in two body styles, the Moxie Auger Tail and the Pulsar Paddle Tail offer a perfected blend of field-tested color patterns and hyperactive designs that come to life in the water. To produce unparalleled fish catching movement and vibration, other soft baits just can't match. Authentex Plastics, your prescription strength cure for slow fishing, only from Beef Fish and Tackle. In pursuit of what lies beneath, Okuma Fishing Tackle is the point of connection between angler and opportunity, giant pike and muskie, drag screaming salmon, and deep bodied lake trout, hard fighting bass, and the elusive walleye, all pursued by anglers that demand the smoothest, longest casting reels, and perfectly balanced fishing rods. Engineered to perfection, everywhere, every species, Okuma Fishing Tackle is inspired fishing. 
At Aluma, we're in it for the long haul. That's why we make the longest lasting, most rugged trailers on the road. Flatbeds, bike haulers, tilt trailers, and enclosed. If you have a lot to move, we've got your way to move it. Our lightweight aluminum trailers will handle even your heaviest loads. At Aluma, we are right behind you with an industry-leading five-year warranty. Because every trip and every load is valued. Fish. Right kind? I think so, yeah. I think it's a nice fish. Is it? You know, we've had a, obviously before it was glass calm, and we've had definitely a, the wind picked up, and hopefully this is a sign of good things to come. You seen him yet, Pat? I haven't. He's certainly not acting like a pike, is he? No. You want hand with the uh, net, or? I bet I can scoop him here. Get him to come up. That's a nice fish. Oh, more <laughs> arm. There we go. More arm. Nice walleye. One of those, another one of those spawned out females. Pop that hook out. Nice fish though. Did not crunch it, huh? No, just, you know, it was almost like a live bait rigging hit where, you know, you don't have that initial bite and it's just kind of a little bit of a tug back, but nice walleye. All right, we'll get this one back and get back in there and catch another one. There she goes. I gotta find a different plastic color. I mean, this, <laughs> these are the conditions that I love and I can't get a sniff. Last time the bite was hot for me, it was glass calm. This thing makes no sense. Fish. Wouldn't you know it, the sun gets a little lower and they start getting a little more active. A little bit. Still not active enough to eat plastics, but I'm not giving up. You, give get, another, you get another one or two, I might have to switch over to the minnows. I give it about five, 10 minutes and they should start whaling on those things. I hope so. That's decent fish. Yeah. There we go. Boy, we've caught a bunch of these today. Very few small fish. Right. Like two. Just a ton of nice quality Leech Lake fish. They're a lot of fun to catch. Get her back. interesting to see what they do with the, uh, the limits up here. Yeah, I, I mean, know we they're... know they're gonna do good things with it. Yeah, the they're... populations are good. Mm-hmm. They're doing a, I think they're gonna do a proposal or something this fall, possibly raise that limit back up to six. Right now it's four. We'll see. Grab another Throw me one, will ya? I'm a stubborn bugger, but I gotta give in sooner or later. Hardest thing in the world for me to do right here. Just drag it. Blech. There you go. You gave in and look what happened. Oh, it just, it, it <laughs> hurts me. <laughs> I should not whine about such things. You picked me a good minnow. When we go from spot to spot, I sort out the good ones and put them in that top shelf. Do you? Yep. Nice. <laughs> well, I tell you what, if we were keeping fish today, we'd have a whole bunch of nice ones. Mm hmm Oh, they're cold. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's 75, 80 degree day today. Of course, out here on the lake with water temperatures in the mid to upper 40s, feel icy almost, but yeah. they're not. See you later, fish. All right, Pat, I need your uh, middle picking expertise. I'm already on it. Good man, thank you. Well, you ain't a kid, and it is just a drag. Yeah, I, it is, you know. <laughs> I mean, it just seems like just dragging that bait is, is what's getting them to bite, you know. We're drifting at about a half a mile to three quarters of a mile an hour, and all I'm doing is just every five or six feet, just giving it a couple pops, try and get the attention of some walleyes if they're nearby, and then I'm just dragging it for another five or six feet, and they're swimming over and they're sucking it up off the bottom. You know, we're running a one eighth ounce, so it's not really glued to the bottom, but I'm still getting that bottom contact with that jig here and there. And, you know, when the bite's tough, it's one of the best presentations to scratch out a nice batch of fish. Just a light bite though, holy yeah. smokes. Yeah, you'd think with this wind that they'd be a little bit more aggressive. I know, I'll take every bite I can. I think some of the I most can... aggressive fish we had were when it was flat calm today. I know, I'll take every bite I can get, but man, they're just barely eating it. Well, 
One thing's for sure, we've caught a lot of fish today. Yeah. There we go. And just that jig, just, just sticking out there. You know, he just grabbed that fat head. There we go. Another nice fish. As that sun starts getting lower like this, I'm just gonna fire this thing back and hope to get on a good frenzy of them. We're in the zone now. This is it, huh? Right here. There's a fish. That one popped it. Don't make me go back to a middle bat. <laughs> no, no matter how I catch them, I still have a lot of fun catching walleyes. I definitely have ways that I'd prefer to catch them, but. Best part about fishing minnows is watching you catch them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's opening week here. This is a just an absolute staple tactic too for catching fish in cold water. They're just getting done spawning. They're getting hungry and they're wolfing down the jig. There we go. And that one did the disappearing jig trick. That was a no doubter, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real nice fish there. Boy, they're like carbon copies the last handful we've caught. Yep. But get them back and catch another one. So that brings us to the end of today's show and the end of season number 12 here at In-Depth Outdoors. As always, I really enjoyed fishing with Pat. Of course, his back is going to be a little sore after carrying me all day long. I'm going to spend some time this summer just trying to figure out what it takes for me to catch a fish on a jig and minnow. It's a work in progress. So before we go, I really want to thank everyone that's contributed their time and their knowledge to make our 12th season of In-Depth Outdoors so special. I could go about listing all the people we fished with, but I know I'm going to forget somebody. But for the guys that are watching, you can count on me sending you an email or a personal phone call to thank you by the time this airs. So to everybody there at home, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to be putting out a lot of video this summer, and the only place you're going to find it is on our YouTube channel. So from all of us here at In-Depth Outdoors, thanks for tuning in every week. We'll see you next season. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.